Next, on Six in the Mix, meet the artists chosen to create the official show poster for this year's Coconut Grove Arts Festival. We'll take you inside his studio for a closer look at his art and his signature style. Also, the festival wouldn't be complete without some sizzling, fried, and just downright delicious food. We'll discover the diverse flavors you can experience this weekend. Plus, we catch up with the Miami New Times to find out how they put together one of the best music weekends just for you. And Monty Trainer is here to tell us about how the festival celebrates art in the Grove every day of the year by mentoring the next generation of artists. Hey everyone, I'm Roxanne Vargas. And I'm Adam Cooperstein. This special edition of Six in the Mix with an exclusive preview of the 2015 Coconut Grove Arts Festival starts right now. I can't believe it, the festival already here. The poster unveiling happened just a few weeks ago right here in Coconut Grove at the gorgeous Sonesta Bayfront Hotel. And now that we've seen that beautiful poster, let's find out who the man behind it is and what his inspiration was. My name is Dweb. I grew up in a small island near Bordeaux. So I was living always on the water or near the water. So I, it's why I love the sailboat and to sail, to, to, to boat when I have time. I have been painting for 40 years and more because when I start when I make my living with my art. But I, I start when I was a small boy to paint. <laughs> I love uh, to, to work with oil because it's, it's more um, there is more life. I love the colors and I, I love to be dusty with my hand and put my hand in the, in the colors. I was very proud to be chosen to do this uh, poster, all with boats, because uh, Coconut Grove is uh, a, a harbor with a lot of sailboats. So I am very happy to, to be there this year. <laughs> Always when I travel, I never take pictures. I have remember where I am going, and I do all from memory, so I am free to, to change the boat, the colors. Each work you do is different. The world is very bad, so I want to give them happiness and, and, and good energy. I think it's a joy. People have to be happy, so it's why I try to, to give them what, what is my job. Coconut Grove has been home to the art festival for over 50 years now, but did you know it started as a small street show? Here's a look back and a look at what you'll experience this weekend. Coconut Grove wasn't exactly founded as an artist colony back in the late 1800s, but it didn't really take long for artists and writers to discover the Grove and its natural charm and beauty. The Coconut Grove Arts Festival is rich in history, with the first street show kicking off in the early 60s, all to help promote a performance at the local playhouse. Charlie Cinnamon is credited with starting this tradition, a simple festival like one you'd find in France. I created this um, left bank of Paris, uh, in which we had all sorts, we created a street show of a uh, uh, clothesline kind of thing, hanging paintings, wherever we could find space. It is now the world's largest outdoor art exhibit centered in the heart of the Grove. The signature street event spans over a mile long on McFarland Road featuring food, fun, and of course, all things art. With 14 categories ranging from paintings to print, photography, enthusiasts will enjoy this three-day event, showcasing the works of over 380 of the world's finest artists and craftsmen. But if you're looking for the taste of the Grove, there is plenty of tasty treats that are sure to hit the spot. From healthy to hearty, there's something for everyone. Sink your teeth into fun finger foods while mixing and mingling with fellow foodie fans. And be sure to stop by the Culinary Pavilion to watch some of your favorite local chefs prepare your plate. 
it's the music that moves you, Peacock Park is the perfect place for family fun. This year's lineup is sure to be a hit on center stage. From smooth jazz to rock festival goers, you'll all be entertained for hours during this mini music festival. There's an excellent sculptor in this festival. It's his first year in the festival, but you may have already seen his work all over South Beach, on Lincoln Road, and in Wynwood. His little climbers that he calls goal achievers are what pushed him as a child in Colombia to reach his dreams today. I remember when I was a child, you know, people used to say, well, you need to say goals. And one day I say, you know what? The climbers will be a good way of expressing goals. I call them goal achievers because you know, they are achieving a goal. We all have goals in life. A lot of these pieces have to do a lot with my childhood. When I remember my childhood, it's, it's, it was hard. We didn't have a lot of money, but it was fun. I have a lot of fun with this. I'm in this business not because of the money, it's because I enjoy it and I really love it. In Colombia, we are very conservative when it comes to designing and, uh, and doing models. Uh, once I started experimenting with new cultures and traveling, that's where I found out that it wasn't only about being uh, conservative. I started seeing all this contemporary uh, work. All the stuff that I make now is very colorful, popping colors, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the blues, and I really love it. Coming up, it's an exclusive music lineup created just for you. Find out when your favorite performers will be rocking center stage this weekend as we take you behind the scenes with the Miami New Times. And a lens reveals both what's in front and behind it. See the photographs and the story from a man who's been capturing these moments from all around the world. Plus, if you're looking to add a recipe to your collection, you may want to write this one down. One of the top chefs to sports celebrities is here with a savory snack that you can taste at the Culinary Pavilion this weekend. You're watching a special edition of Six in the Mix with an exclusive preview to the 2015 Coconut Grove Arts Festival on NBC6 South Florida. Of course, you're going to see great art, but you will hear it as well. For the first time in 50 years, the Coconut Grove Arts Festival is teaming up with the Miami New Times to present an awesome lineup of live music on stage. This is the first year that the Miami New Times has partnered with Coconut Grove Arts Festival to curate that three-day lineup of uh, music that runs on their main stage all day for that full weekend. We're going to hear pretty much everything that you would hear uh, out on the town in Miami. So you've got uh, Latin fusion, you got a little bit of soul, you got a little bit of funk, rock and roll, indie, you know, a touch of folk, some dirty blues. Just tried to select some of our favorite bands and cover all those genres that have uh, always been important to the Miami music scene. You've got Juke, Miami's best dirty blues band. They play um, not only here, but across the country festivals. They actually played the closing night at Tobacco Road. Ooh. Catchy Shuby, who represents Miami's soul traditions. That reaches all the way back to the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, the Overtown scene. Locos Porwana, who uh, typify what most people um, consider to be essential Miami music. You know, the Latin fusion scene that cropped up around Little Havana. Beyond that, we have some of the other indie favorites on the lineup. It's a matter of grit and determination, particularly in Miami. And I think over the past few years, maybe the, the last three to five years, there's been a lot of buzz around the city, partly because of uh, major music festivals like Ultra, as well as uh, Three Points, you know, which has a lot more homegrown, uh, independent focus. What I love most about my job is catching on to a story and following it for weeks and having people really get excited about it. It only makes sense for the New Times to link up with the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, considering that 
neighborhood's long tradition, um, you know, both musical and cultural. It was really just a perfect combination. Coming up, one of South Florida's top celebrity chefs, Richard Ingram, joins us with a preview of his creation he'll be whipping up just for you. It's one of the many savory treats you can sample this weekend. And he's changing the way we think of art with his 3D creativity. Learn why his digital designs are making folks do a double take. Plus, she knew she was going to be an artist at age three. Hear what it was that led her down this artistic path. Stay connected with us while you're here at the Arts Festival. Visit us at the NBC6 Telemundo 51 booth and snap a quick selfie with your favorite on-air personalities. Then share it using hashtag CGAF2015. Make sure you tweet the team at NBC6 in the mix. And if you'd like to learn more about the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, just log on to CGAF.com. Welcome back to this special edition of Six in the Mix and our exclusive preview of the 2015 Coconut Grove Arts Festival. This next man has been photographing the world since the 1960s. He's photographed the Berlin Wall, Paris, South America, but you might be surprised at what his most cherished moments are. Hello, my name is Gary Seidel. I'm a photographer, essentially black and white and also hand colored. I've been around the world. I was born in Germany. Berlin is my hometown. And my most famous shot that so many people in Miami have is the Berlin Wall. I was born during the war in Berlin and I saw a lot of things and I always wanted to travel. I didn't want to sit in, a, in, a, in an office and I studied photography to some degree in New York City in the 60s. As a photographer, the 60s in Berlin was the most memorable time. I worked for the US Army and I photographed Kennedy approaching the Berlin Wall. And he actually turned to me and he said, what are the women screaming at me for? I said, Mr. President, they're asking, where is your wife? And then he mumbled under his breath, nobody's interested in me. <laughs> Photography, A, you have to love it. It's a difficult business, but, uh, and also video has changed a lot. The pure photographer is getting rarer and rarer. I take pictures what stirs them up. And the first one that really stirred people up, especially the Colombians, was a picture of an old abandoned hotel called Salto de Tecandama. And they responded to it incredibly. But Colombia was just such an incredible place at that time. I'm traditional and I, always, I do take some other interesting stuff such, such as prisons. I went to Auschwitz several times and People are still very interested. I had enough talent to work for travel magazines and then do art festivals, which I still enjoy very, very much. And I still get people who bought from me 20 years ago. I'd say hello or buy a small piece and said, it's always a pleasure to see you. Food is definitely art, right? Well, we are celebrating that all weekend long at the Culinary Pavilion. Chefs from all over South Florida will be there, and that includes one of our friends, celebrity chef Richard Ingram, chef to Miami Heat's own Dwayne Wade. He will be there this weekend. I'll be joining him to kind of cook on the side. That's Sunday at 3 p.m., but right now, here's a preview of what he'll be making for you. Hey everyone, I'm Chef Richard Ingram here with a preview of what you can taste at this weekend's Coconut Grove Arts Festival. Grilled portobello tacos with blood orange salsa. Well to start off for our blood orange salsa, you want to add blood oranges. Next, we're going to add in the juice from the blood oranges. A little Grand Marnier, a little cilantro, red onion. I love onion, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Some orange bell pepper for color and also for flavor. We're gonna add in a little bit of jalapeno because you need that heat when you're talking about some salsa. Lime juice for the acidity and to kind of balance it out. Two squeezes in here. And then we'll finish it off by seasoning it with a little salt and pepper, Creole seasoning, smoked paprika. Go ahead and mix that up. And actually we're gonna add a little bit more of our cilantro in there to give it a little bit more flavor. And what you wanna do is to take this and refrigerate it for maybe about 10 to 15 minutes while you're grilling your portobello mushrooms. And now we have our grilled portobello mushrooms that we already pre-grilled. We put a little olive oil 
red pepper flake, fresh garlic, salt and pepper. We cooked them on each side for about four to three minutes just so they got nice and pliable. And now we're ready to slice them so that we can build our tacos. So we'll take them, we're gonna cut them on the bias, which means we're gonna cut them on a slant. Nice slices, just like so. Take your portobello mushrooms, put them right in the center. And if you like me, I like to pile mine high. Take some chopped spinach, we put that right on top. Then we'll add just a little green onion, and then we'll add that salsa right on top, just like so. And a little squeeze of lime juice. So there you have it, grilled portobello tacos with blood orange salsa. Make sure you stop by the Culinary Pavilion on Sunday and say hello. I'm Chef Richard Ingram, enjoy the show. This next artist is a veteran of the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, but when you see his work, it'll have you doing a double take. It's not a painting, it's not a photograph, it's a 3D digital design. Hello, my name is Bo Tadzaroff, and I am a digital artist, and uh, I do works of art on the computer and print them out on canvas. I've been doing the digital art for the last 15 years, and before that I was a sculptor, and I worked in uh, a few different mediums, mostly clay and metal. My father was an artist, so growing up I was constantly in a studio, he's a ceramicist, so I'd work with the clay, and I got more interested in really the visualization and the, the things that you could do in the computer to create, and I decided I could come up with a final image. I always want to bring out something new. I want you to see it and wonder, wait, what is that? I get people that come in, they think it's photography, they think it's a painting, and I like that people go away knowing something new about art. I really love liquid reflection, so I love, you know, the qualities of the liquid that you can get reflection, transparency inside of it, and then beyond that, in those reflections, there are more reflections, so I like to layer up as much as I can into the pieces. You know, I've played chess since I was a little kid. I enjoy the game. I'm not that great at it, but it's a fun game to play. And I feel like it's, it's everything, you know? It's the good and the bad. It's the dichotomy of, you know, which way you're gonna go. You're gonna go, you know, in this direction or that direction. And uh, my dad always used to say, every day is a fight. And I feel like chess is kind of like that. Like every little battle, every day. I can spend anywhere from a week to two weeks on a piece. It depends, every little object that I make, an object can take up to a day, depending on the complexity of it. So every little thing takes a little while, then I'll bring it all together, I'll look at it, and then I'll reassess you know, how I like the way it looks, and then I'll go back and I'll tweak some of the changes. I've been doing the Coconut Grove Art Festival since I believe 2003. Um, I've been there every year, I love that show. It's maybe my favorite show to do in the country, and I do them from here to California, up to New York, Chicago, everywhere, and I love it. Coming up, Mr. Grove himself, Monty Trainer, joins us with how the professional artists are painting a beautiful future by mentoring the next generation of artists. And she knew she wanted to be a painter at a very young age. Find out how she made that dream come true. And if you'd like to learn more about the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, just log on to CGAF.com. There, you can purchase your tickets, find your favorite artist, and much more. We'll see you there. Welcome back to Six of the Mix. I'm joined now by El Jefe. Yes, the boss. Monty Trainer, president of the Coconut Grove Arts Festival. Monty, don't lose your hat. I won't. Monty, we've been talking about all the amazing stuff happening this year, but Coconut Grove, the arts festival, goes beyond just three days, right? We have Art in the Grove 365 days a year. We do a program, a mentoring program that we do out at uh, uh, Jungle Island, where we work with uh, professional artists and they take uh, 10 to 15 students and they kind of study the environment of the jungle, then they they do the they come back and they do the painting, and then we uh, bring it down, and then we have a judging, and then we have the, we sell them, and the the schools benefit. So that's that's good. That works out nicely. Yeah, these pictures that you're taking a look at, absolutely gorgeous of these artists working with these high school students. We have a busy weekend ahead, but we're busy with Art in the Grove all year round. Monty Trainer, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you for being such a great supporter in this. Thank you. Did you know what you wanted to be in the second grade? Our next artist knew she wanted to be a professional artist, and she did just that. Here's how. I've been painting my whole life, really. Uh, I knew in the second grade I wanted to go into art. Painting is a passion. I like to do it. I do it for pleasure. My first 
Art Festival was Coconut Grove. This will be my third year. I love to investigate all the movement that goes on inside the confines of a real defined shape. The movement that goes on inside a leaf or a petal and then how they curl in on each other. I'll take photographs, I'll take several. I use the photographs because I like my details to be accurate and I get a lot of pleasure out of painting detail. Most I've spent on a piece is about four months. I did a landscape of a tropical rainforest because I invest a great deal of attention to detail throughout the canvas. It's not just one small part of it as a rule. So the larger the piece, the more time it takes me. I call them intimate landscapes because it's not a broad expanse of land, but they're more than a close-up of a, a flower. So I want them to feel like they're in it already, surrounded by it. I like them to feel a part of it. And it's been a lot of fun. Stay connected with us while you're here at the Arts Festival. Visit us at the NBC6 Telemundo 51 booth and snap a quick selfie with your favorite on-air personalities and share it using hashtag CGAF2015. Make sure you tweet the team at NBC6 in the mix. And if you'd like to learn more about the Coconut Grove Arts Festival, just log on to CGAF.com. There, you can purchase your tickets, find your favorite artist, and much more. We'll see you there. Thank you so much for joining us as we give you an exclusive preview of all the action at the Coconut Grove Arts Festival right here on Six in the Mix. And Roxy, we couldn't ask for better weather this weekend. It's going to be clear and a little cool so you can bundle up and look all cute at the festival. Yeah, boots allowed, by the way. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm Adam Cooperstein. And I'm Roxanne Vargas. We'll see you at the festival.